Christy Doran from The Raw out of Brisbane. Welcome to the program, mate. You broke the story. It has been called a bombshell. But how much of a shock, how much of a surprise did it really come out of nowhere, this news? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What a story. Um, how, how, how much of a shock or a surprise is this? Did it come out of nowhere? Look, it didn't, it didn't come out of nowhere at all. It was in December, um, sh- shortly after the Wallabies um, and Rugby Australia officials arrived back in Down Under following a, a disappointing and underwhelming spring tour where the Wallabies won two from five, but at the same time suffered a historic maiden defeat to Italy. Um, it was around that point in time where RA's eyes lit up and the board was shaken um, when they lost to Italy. When, when when they arrived back in Australia and Eddie Jones was sacked shortly after, I was told by one Rugby Australia official that it's changed everything. Now, a lot of people at the time raised their eyebrows and thought, hang on, this is more clickbait or whatever it is. But... Um, Jones's uh, availability very much made RA think, made Eddie Jones think, should I come back? Is it the right time? Should I wait until after the World Cup? Ultimately, the decision, you know, less than a week after a, a four-day training camp, which included Dave Rooney on the Gold Coast, um, ultimately the decision has been made to farewell Dave Rooney and welcome Eddie Jones in on a five-year deal. I noticed that last week, I was still on holiday, but I was flicking through the news, and I noticed that Dave Rennie had, uh, had said unequivocally that Eddie Jones is not going to join him. He's got no winning co-coaching. He's not going to be part of the team. I mean, what, did he know that the writing was on the wall then? Or, I mean, when I say go back to, was this a surprise? Is it a surprise to Rennie? Well, look, I think from my understanding, Dave Rennie has been left disappointed. Uh, of course, you know, he's invested three years of his time and his energy into it, but he, he knew, I think, the writing was on the wall, um, given it was last July that he was in the middle of a contract extension talks when they were overrun by England in Brisbane and Sydney and they lost the series against England. Those contract extension talks were paused. Uh, a record defeat to Argentina in the second match of the rugby championship made RA kind of shake a little bit. And then when they had a really deflating poor performance against the Springboks in Sydney, which came after a victory in Adelaide, RA thought, OK, we've got a bit of a problem here. And, and very much on the spring tour, and they lost to Italy, it thought, OK, well, this it, it's not a matter of if, it's more when. So... Um, disappointing, of course, for, for, for Dave Rennie. I think many people think, and I, I think the Rugby Australia board still thinks he's a good coach, but is he the right coach for this Wallaby side? That, that's the question that they've ultimately said, no, he, he's not. Chrissy Doran from the Raw of Brisbane is with us. We've got Wayne Pivak on the program as well, another guy who was let go last year, obviously, as you know, by Wales, after a string of, of, of unconvincing results and that loss to Georgia. With Rennie, does it just come down to results? Five wins from 14 tests. If they hadn't beaten Wales, it was going to be the worst year since 1958. I mean, we can, we can run all these stats by you, mate. I mean, the fact of the matter is you've had a hell of a lot of injuries as well as that. Some of those test matches lost, like to France and that, were just by so close. I mean, it should have beaten us in Melbourne, except for a brain fade from, from Foley there at the end. So, I mean, look, you know, does it just purely come down to points for and points against for Rennie? Oh, I think it does. It's, he's got a 38% winning record, and unfortunately that's the long and the short of it. Um, uh, we know international rugby is so tight these days, so it, it comes down to well, how do you turn those narrow defeats into wins, because it really looks like excuses for a lot of it. And you can uh, uh, applaud um, the courage that was shown at particular times to hang on, which is, you know, words that Dave Rennie would often use. But you know, they lost on the spring tour in 2021, where they lost three matches after a five-match winning streak. And and the, the defeats there, one against Scotland, which was right in the, you know, there for the taking. Um, against England, they, they played terribly, but they hung on through some good accurate goal kicking and then fell off and then against Wales they probably should have won that in Cardiff yet they had another close defeat where they couldn't close it out so why why do you always keep coming just short and and maybe it's a personality thing maybe it's a um, you don't have enough leadership maybe it is the the changing uh, the constant chopping and changing in, in players yes there were lots of injuries yes they used 51 players and 
in 2022. But at the same time, Dave Rennie was constantly changing his halfbacks and his fullbacks. I think of Nick White last year, Tate McDermott, Jake Gordon, three pretty capable nines. But even on the spring tour, Dave Rennie would say, we're, we're planning on rotating our nines. Why? Why has why it it's taken three years? Why have you not come to grips with who your best nine is and your second best nine is? Because I don't think you need three years to work that out. And they were fit for the entire campaign last year with the exception of Nick White missing the final test against Wales because of a head knock. Um, you know, they're, they're some of the, the, the little things uh, which might have been overlooked or might have been glossed over, which I think have, have really kind of painted a picture around Randy and his coaching ethos. And finally, we thank you so much for your time. Um, at such um, a short notice as well. Hamish McLennan, who, uh, to be honest, um, has, has an image over here, mate, and I don't mean to be disrespectful, but, you know, he's got a bit of a crunchy, the cl- you know, the clown image and that. He just sounds off about all kinds of stuff. Half the time, no one knows whether he's right, whether he even knows what he's talking about. He says here, it's a major coup for Australian rugby to have the best coach in the world return home to coach the iconic Wallabies. Is he serious? What is he, what is he talking about? I mean, Eddie Jones hasn't won anything. He hasn't won a World Cup or anything. He's lost in a final a couple of times. How can he be seriously describe him as the best rugby coach in the world? Okay, hang on. I'll, let's scroll back. You know, if, you, if, if people were talking about Dave Rainey and his outstanding coaching achievements, the last thing that he won was in, in 2013, and he won in 2012 as well. Uh, he did have Wayne Smith. And a, and a number of very, very talented players like Sonny Bill Williams and, and you know, Sam Keynes, Brody Retallick's, Aaron Prudence, you know, greats of the All Blacks. Mm, mm. You know, you compare that to Eddie Jones and he's taken over from England. They won 18 straight in 2016 to 2017. They won the Grand Slam then. They won in the Six Nations in 2017. They won a, 20, uh, a Six Nations in 2020, albeit, you know, falling over the line there, really. Um, uh, but they made a World Cup final. They made a, a World Cup final in 2003. Eddie Jones orchestrated the greatest upset in World Cup history when the, the Japanese beat the Springboks. He's won a, a World Cup as a technical advisor alongside Jake White in South Africa. I think to, um, to state that he's not won anything is ridiculous, uh, Martin. And uh, Eddie Jones is an Australian. And, you know, there is a sense in Australia that maybe there needs to be a few more Australians back in the game here because coaching Australians is very different to coaching New Zealanders like it is very different to coaching South Africans. And I spoke to the Rebels coach, Kevin Foote, about this just last week and he said that it's a hugely different approach. And I, and, and, and said, you know, in South Africa, you just tell them what to do and they'll do it for you. But in Australia, they ask questions of why, et cetera, et cetera. So... Uh, I, I think I, I personally think it's a bold call. It's a big call, but I, I think it's the right call. I think delaying it any further, if you if you don't think that Dave Rennie was the right man, uh, well, why, why let him go through to the World Cup? Um, I think Eddie Jones, a 73% winning record with England, he's a proven operator, uh, but the proof will be in the pudding. But I know for a fact that RA and Rugby Australia have been really circling in the diary, 25 and 27. The home line series and a home World Cup. This year, I think if they make a semi-final, I think it'll be a success for them. But I don't think they should just be aiming for a semi-final because they've got a great draw, unlike the top four nations in the world at the moment, New Zealand, South Africa, Ireland and France, who are all on the one side of the draw. Two of those will be going home at the quarterfinal stages. The Wallabies will likely play either England, Argentina or Japan in the quarterfinal I know who I'd be much preferring to play.